and welcome to our worship for Sunday the 25th of October. It's good to be with you again, it's good to be back online uh, and sharing our, our worship, our thoughts, our prayers this time together. Uh, last Sunday we had a small group of people who joined us in church for in-person worship. Sadly though the technology didn't work quite so well as the first time so there was no way for me to share the service later in the day. But that's fine, we're back to normal or whatever our normal currently is just now. This afternoon it, there's going to be an opportunity to share in communion together. This is going to be live via Zoom starting at 2pm. Uh, the private room will be open from 1.45 p.m. So details can be found on the church Facebook page and there is also a link on the Worship at Home sheet um, and was in the Worship at Home email. So hopefully between all of those different places, um, those of you that are able and want to will be able to join us for communion. If you want to do that, you need to make sure that you've got your bread and your wine or juice or uh, whatever it is that you're going to drink with that. Um, so that you've got those ready and you, your family group, whoever you live with, are able to join together in front of your computer screen um, or your tablet or whatever it is that you're using um, so that we can worship together. So that is um, two o'clock this afternoon. So I'll look forward to seeing some of you then, I hope. On Tuesday this week coming, um, the presbytery will be meet will be meeting 7 p.m. on Tuesday evening. Um, at this time there will be a discussion and vote on the revised presbytery plan. Um, those of you who are in church last week heard me read a citation which means that the congregation is invited to observe the meeting if they so wish. Um, if you want to watch you can do that by going to the Falkirk Presbytery website and I will put a link to that on the Facebook page um, on Tuesday. Uh, that will be live streamed um, so you can observe uh, from there. So that will um, go, I think it will go live about 6.45 on Tuesday evening but I will put the link up on Tuesday afternoon to the Falkirk Presbytery website so that those of you who want to can, can watch. Um, I also want to give you um, a, a bit of a health update. Um, I think most of you are aware that I have this um, post-viral thing which now has a name called long COVID. It's basically the long-term after effects of the COVID-19 virus. It means, uh, the biggest thing means I get overwhelming bouts of fatigue when I struggle to do a lot of the things that I normally would be able to do. The doctors recommended that I uh, work reduced hours and I've been doing that really for the last couple of months but um, it's not really getting any better and so the recommendation now is that I cut my hours a lot more drastically. So I am in effect going to be working three half days a week um, with one or two additions but not much more than that and I'll be concentrating on preparing and delivering worship um, and I think that's going to be just about it. Most of my committee work is in abeyance um, and that'll be it. So that's where I'm at and I will give you updates every so often but I also don't want to bore people with this oh my goodness she's still moaning about her Covid. So um, unless you really want me to I won't be doing lots and lots of updates but that's that's really where I'm at just now. Um, so all prayers are greatly appreciated for, for healing and strength um, for both of us because Alistair is in pretty much the same boat uh, so we're just trying to work out the best way to carry on um, in order to live right now. So that's where I'm at. Um, so there you go. Uh, this week's service is brought to you not just by me but by Beatrice and Harry and Lasbeck. Um, 
Beatrice's prayer later on in the service is just beautiful um, and I hope that you will find it as moving and meaningful as I did when I first heard it. So that's from Beatrice. Um, um, last bit uh, in his reading begins with a little explanation which I just loved. So um, that's, that's uh, last bit's reading. Um, and of course, Harry provides all our musical accompaniments and he is singing the intro today, which is um, a hymn that I know and love, which I knew was going to be pretty new to all of you. And he's the way he sings it is so beautiful, so poignant. And I hope that you will enjoy listening to that intro uh, right now. together now shall we let us pray God of love our foundation and source we stand in awe of your unending love for your beloved children we know that your great love is given freely and in abundance for all whatever or whoever we are God of love we give thanks this day for the message, for the commandment to love and be loved. Guide us in our journey to truly live as you have commanded. Teach us to love you, to love our neighbour and to love ourselves. God of love, it is the greatest of your commands. and Though we strive to live each day attempting to fulfil it, we often fail. In a world of conflicting allegiances and distractions, where hate is easier than care, help us to know your love. God of love, teach us to know a love that is patient and kind and giving, a love that seeks justice and equality for all, a love that rejects the easiness of discrimination and prejudice for the brilliance of a world, a community, a life lived in the warmth of true love, given freely for all and to all. 
Jesus' name we pray and in his words we pray together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Now, our first hymn this morning, again, I heard from Harry, is new to you all. Um, but the tune is really, really simple and it's quite repetitive. Um, each verse really follows exactly the same form, except one starts with praise, the next starts with love, and the third starts with is for serving. And so that's it. It's got a beautiful rhythm to it. It's actually based on a French hymn, but it's beautiful. And I hope that you will enjoy learning and singing at home. Praise. I will praise you, Lord. about if I was to ask you how many commandments are there in the Bible what would your answer be? I suspect everybody would say well there's definitely ten commandments and you'd be right. However there are other commandments I mean Jesus told us to go and love one another as we loved ourselves he also told us to go out into the world and share the good news. So there's a couple more commandments. The Old Testament actually contains more than 600 different commandments and rules. 600. Can you imagine? How complicated would that be? How tricksy would that be? I've got here, and if you've got the Worship at Home sheet, you'll have seen it, a little um, summary, rewording of the, the Ten Commandments. So I'm just going to see if I can do that and put it up on the screen for you all to see. There we go. And that's the Ten Commandments. And they're actually in a much simpler language, perhaps, than you might have seen before. Put God first. Worship Him only. No, don't use any bad words. Work and rest, obey your parents. Um, harm no one, don't cheat. It's not yours, so don't take it. Uh, tell the truth and 
don't be jealous of other people's stuff. So that's quite simple to follow. There was a time when Jesus was teaching in the temple that um, some a lawyer who studied God's laws and knew them all inside out and back to front came along and asked Jesus, what does the law say is the greatest commandment? And he knew there were 600 and something rules. He knew that they were all incredibly complicated. He knew that Moses had started with the Ten Commandments and he wasn't trying to trick Jesus. He genuinely wanted to know what was the greatest commandment of them all? Everybody was waiting with bated breath. What was Jesus' answer going to be? How would he answer this when they knew, they all knew how many difficult and complicated rules there were? Jesus looked the man in the eye and said, it's really quite simple. Love God. Love God with everything you've got, your heart, your mind, your soul, your dreams, your hopes, your passions, absolutely everything that you have. If you commit that to God, that's the greatest commandment. Everybody was like, wow, yeah. And then Jesus goes, and, oh, bated breath, what was he next going to say? There's another commandment, Jesus said, that is just as important as loving God. And it's this. Love your neighbour as much as you love yourself. And before the lawyer could ask another question or make any comment, Jesus just said, these are the two greatest commandments. That's it. Within these two commandments, you will find all the teachings of Moses and all the prophets. Boom. End of. Jesus stopped and everybody stopped in amazement because, well, gosh, if Jesus, what Jesus was saying was, if we only follow these two roles, then all of the other 600 and something will simply fall into place. Everything else looks after itself because if we love God, and we love others, and we love ourselves, then we'll never want to do anything bad or harmful because that wouldn't be loving. When it comes down to it, it really is that simple, isn't it? Our family hymn today is, As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. Let's hear and read God's word.
together. Uh, we read in Matthew's Gospel at chapter 22, reading from verse 34 to the end of the chapter at verse 46. And Jesus is here debating and contesting with the Sadducees and the Pharisees during the days before his final passion and crucifixion. And Matthew takes up the narrative. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment and the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? The son of David, they replied. He said to them, How is it then that David, speaking by the Spirit, calls him Lord? For he says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one could say a word in reply. And from that day on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. Amen. And may God open our hearts and our minds to receive his word. Today is not going to be a full sermon. Today I'm sharing a reflection that um, was part of the Spill the Beans resources for today. Now, I'm sharing it with you for actually a few reasons, two really, but first, it really spoke to me when I read it and I found it quite thought-provoking and helpful and I hope that you will too. But the second reason is because I am really trying very hard to exercise self-care. I am tired and I have a deadline to meet. And I know if I want to give you something original, it will take me too long and use up energy that I don't really have. That's quite challenging for me, I have to say. But if I'm following Jesus' command and loving myself, then the loving thing for me to do is to use an excellent resource that's there that will give you a really good reflection and a good time um, and give me some of the rest and the ease that I need. It's not easy to accept that you need that sort of help, but that's where I'm at just now. So I'm working hard on being sensible, following the doctor's orders, following the advice of many of the elders who send me wee notes and comments to make sure that I am doing what the doctor told me. So as I reflect on that greatest commandment, love God and love your, love you all as I love myself. I'm exercising some self-love and using this excellent resource. It's simply called, which commandment is greatest? And that question is repeated all the way through. So let's listen to this together. Which commandment is greatest? How we all love rules and regulations, 
how we need to know the boundaries between what we can and cannot do, like toddlers looking to their parents for affirmation or condemnation. Which commandment is greatest? A huge question demands a huge answer, surely. And it is huge, yet it is also simple. It is profoundly obvious, yet so often we fail to do it. Love God. Love ourselves. Love others. We knew that there was no need to ask, yet we wanted to make it so much more complicated. We attempted to add conditions. We will love God, provided God does not ask anything of us. We will love others, provided they love us back. We will love ourselves, so long as we don't look too close in the mirror. We will love God when the going is good. We will love others when they're part of our group. We will love ourselves when we feel strong and resilient. So many qualifications to love. So many conditions we cannot help ourselves. Which commandment is greatest? The question we ask again and again for each generation, for each day, for each of us. Which commandment is greatest? And the answer comes back again and again, profound and simple. Law and love entwined to be heard afresh and enacted with conviction each new day. Which commandment is greatest? Love God, love self, love others. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, there are times when our words seem inadequate to express our thanks to you for all your goodness to us. You have been with us during this time and your presence reassures us that, in spite of all that is happening in this world today, you are still our Lord and Saviour. In today's Gospel reading, we hear of the two greatest commandments, to love the Lord our God and our neighbour as ourselves. Lord, you know there are some people who, for different reasons, feel they cannot love themselves. They may have been abused or made to feel worthless at some time or belittled in front of others. Be with them, Lord, and assure them that, in your eyes, they are more precious than gold. We would ask your blessing on them and on all who feel unworthy for whatever reason. Lord, we pray for all those who are lonely, those who are bereaved, and all who are in need of your comfort and reassurance. Be with them all, Lord, and help us to help them where it is appropriate. We give thanks for our families and friends, and for our neighbours, and for all they mean to us. We pray for those families which are divided, no matter the reason, and ask your healing touch on all, whom we now name in silence. We give thanks for the changing seasons and the wonderful diversity of the autumn colours. On a clear night we can see the glory of the stars in the different constellations. As the nights lengthen and the daylight shortens, be with those who find it depressing at this time of year. May your light shine on them and see them through until spring comes again. Forgive us, Lord, when we do not care for your creation as we should. We see lots of litter and rubbish dropped in the streets and in the countryside without thought of their impact on the environment. Help us, Lord, to do better and to show that by our actions we do care. We give thanks that we can worship freely, whether at home, online or in the church itself. We pray for ministers everywhere and for those who serve you in countries where Christians are in the minority and are persecuted for their faith. 
Uphold them all, Lord, and give them the strength and the courage they need to continue to do your work wherever they are. Be with all of those who take part in our services, those who lead prayers, read, sing and play musical instruments. We give thanks for their input and for all those who, behind the scenes, work to make sure that our buildings and grounds are looked after and that the requirements for safety are met. Different talents and different gifts, all given willingly in your service, Lord. We would ask your blessing, Lord, on all who will take part later in today's Zoom communion service. We offer all of these our prayers in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. together this morning comes to an end and we return to our daily rhythm. Whatever else you've got planned for Sunday, I hope that you will find ways to love God with all your heart, your mind and your soul. And I hope that you'll find opportunities to pay that love forward to friends and family and neighbours. Go now each one of you with God's love to sustain you today, tomorrow, every day. And until we meet again, stay well, stay safe and be blessed. Amen. I hope that I might see some of you this afternoon at 2pm um, and I will look forward to celebrating communion then. But after that, I will see you at noon on Tuesday. But for now, goodbye, my friends, and God bless.